Hello and welcome to episode 109 of my podcast all about knitting and crochet and my yarn shop here in Wiesbaden, Germany. I'm Kiko and today is August 30th, 2021. And to, last week was a very busy week and I had a lot of, lots of things to do that were not knitting and crochet. There were no long car rides, so I did not manage to work on all my projects. So I'll show a few some fewer pure projects than last time, but I think that's okay. And before I go into that, I'll start with what I'm wearing. And I'm wearing the Haruni shawl. And um, I knit that as a knit along on my channel and on Ravelry. And I'd seen the pattern years and years ago, and uh, I've wanted to knit it for a very long time, but never got around to doing that. And when I was looking for a new pattern to knit as a knit along, I was looking for, for a free pattern, um, we decided, I decided to do the Haruni shawl. Um, it's, as I said, it's a free pattern on, I think it's on knitty.com, but you can also get it through Ravelry. And I used a three-ply opal sock yarn. So the yarn is thinner than normal sock weight yarn. It's probably a lace weight yarn, but it has the same it's made out of the same material as sock yarn, so it's 75% wool and 25% 25 polyamid. Um, I put in beads. I'm not quite sure whether they are in the pattern. Um, there's a free pattern for the Haruni shawl, but there's also a paid pattern that you can get. And then there's also an ebook with uh, several Haruni patterns. So you have the same basic lace patterns but then you can knit a triangular shawl or a loop shawl or a like a crescent shaped shawl and what else can you do i think there's four or five different patterns i bought the ebook and i've knit the um, loop shawl and i've been planning to knit the crescent shaped shawl for a long time i've already wound the the yarn that i want to use just haven't found the time yet anyway so that's the Haruni shawl knit out of three ply sock yarn, beautiful colors. Because of the many colors, you can't really see the lace patterns too clearly, but I don't mind. If you look closely, you can still see it. And also with the beads, um, it's a bit clearer where the leaves are. And the cotton top that I'm wearing is another um, garment that I knit back when I was working for Wollerödel and we had to knit the um, we had to knit the things that were put into the shop windows and uh, we were told which pattern to knit and which color to use but we could choose the size that we knit so that after the things had been in the shop window we can keep them or we can give them away or sell them whatever we wanted to do but so the company um, provided the yarn I provided the work and time to knit the thing and then I could keep it, it was mine. And um, when I, so this is like a tunic, it's fairly long. Oops, it's this long, it's um, it's not quite a dress, but it's, it's like a tunic, no sleeve tunic. Um, the original had sleeves, but they were knit in such a way that I didn't like them, they looked really uh, weird. And so I took them out and I kept thinking about making new sleeves, but then I decided it's a cotton, garment it's it's a summery thing and I don't need sleeves and if it's not warm enough like right now I can wear something underneath with sleeves and that's okay too um yeah but when I was knitting it it's knit in the round and it starts off with the same number of stitches knit and purl and then as you knit up the purl stitches are being decreased they don't disappear completely but the purl stripes get smaller and that way you get a bit of an A-line shaping. Um, but because this is a kind of rip pattern, um, it tries to um, pull together because the, the stockinette uh, part rolls in one direction and the reverse stockinette in the other. So it looked like a very small or slim thing that I was knitting and it was it kept getting longer. And my friends back then were teasing me I was knitting a banana. <laughs> I was knitting a huge banana so this has always been my banana tunic <laughs> and if it had a Ravelry project it would probably be called banana tunic but it was uh, um, 
before I put every project into Ravelry, so there's no pro um, Ravelry project page for that. But as I said, it's a pure cotton, it's a fairly simple pattern. Um, and once you reach the armhole, you um, knit this very simple lace eyelet pattern. It's just um, yarn over knit two together most of the time. I think it, was it in both rows? I don't remember, it's such a long time ago. Um, yeah, but I still like it. At, at first I thought it's a bit weird to have such a big garment in this bright yellow, but I got used to it and I think I can wear it. And because this yarn has yellow in it, I felt I could wear this shawl with this tunic. Yeah, so that's what I'm wearing. Something rather, it's not really new, but it's not very old and something quite old. <laughs> I love to mix it up. Yeah, then on to my finished projects. I have one little finished project this week and it's also last week's new cast on all rolled into one and it's this small hat band that I knitted. And again, I use the Westfalen Wolle, um, Westfalen wool and it's this uh, company by Jenny, a young German who uh, while she was studying, realized that most of the German yarn was um, being exported someplace and then was manufactured into yarn. And then it was uh, brought back to Germany and she thought that was rather stupid and not very sensible and ecological or anything. So she um, started a, bit, a company that um, uses German wool or yarn or fleece and has it made into yarn in Germany and now she's trying to sell it and I bought um, several of her skeins of yarn and I'll try to sell it in my shop and this is her logo. I don't know whether she ships in um, outside of Germany but it's a rather rustic yarn. Um, it's not dyed and um, this is one of the colors, this is the other and then the other two colors are the light and dark gray that I used in a hat that I knit several weeks ago. Um, yeah, and she came up with this pattern for this hat band. It's crocheted. It's crocheted with a yarn held double. Um, it's It was quite easy to do. And for me, it's okay to wear it if I don't wear it too long and if I don't get too warm. Otherwise, it starts to scratch a little. Um, but if you're sensitive, you could sew some fabric inside. You could sew some, um, what's it called? Uh, fleece? I don't know. But you can you can just pick any soft fabric and sew it inside. And then you have something um, soft against your skin and you still have the warmth from the wool. Um, it's the same with the hat that I knit. Yeah, but I just wanted to show. This is one of the things you can do. It go. Crochets up really quickly. Um, yeah, and I'm already planning new projects to knit or crochet with that yarn so I can have, I can show more possibilities. Um, and one of the things I'm thinking about is trying to, to felt it, um, intentionally felt it in the washing machine to make something tight. And But I'm also thinking of, of knitting a color work pullover or cardigan, probably a pullover, because I think it'd be really nice to have something in that yarn to throw over instead of a jacket when you go out in spring or fall. Um, yeah, so I still have, I have many plans for that yarn. So that was my finished object for the week. Um, and on to works in progress. Even though I didn't work on all my projects, I did knit on all of my socks. And the oldest sock is still the Madeleine sock from the Sock Madness. And I knitted exactly 10 rounds. So that was my plan to try and knit 10 rounds um, of the pattern every week. Um, I've now finished 40 rounds of the pattern. So um, that means that I finished the first chart. As far as I remember, the next chart has another 40 rounds. And then I put in the contrast. Um, color yarn for the heel, for the afterthought heel, and so on and so forth. So it's nothing new, it's still a beautiful pattern, it's still a pattern that I have to pay attention. You have lots and lots of floats on the inside. 
I do um, cross my yarns every, if the um, stretch of color I'm knitting is more than four stitches, I try to um, like catch the float every, every three to four stitches. I think three or four stitches wide, um, the float isn't too long. But sometimes I will do five stitches, but never more than that. Um, I think if it's six stitches or more, they just get too long and then you can catch your toe in them or something. So I try to catch them every three or four stitches. Yeah, and then I continue knitting on my husband's birthday socks. So um, last week I wasn't quite sure how to start the stockinette bit. So I've done that now. I've I did the first bit of, um, so that was the first two pearl stitches that I, that um, turned into stockinette and then these were the next two and now I, oh I've already started with the next bit. So uh, these pearl stitches are now being knit and then there'll be one more set of pearl stitches I think that need to be knit. So that was the first bit, and then the second, third, and fourth. Yeah, and then I have like half the stitches. It's not exactly half the stitches, but um, it's what I knit on this sock. So I'm trying to do the same on the second sock. I didn't try to uh, match up the, the color stripes. I never do that. I usually don't do that. They're not really very different, I realize now, but that's okay. It's, I think it doesn't matter with this, um, it doesn't matter to me anyway, but especially with this colorway, um, I think it doesn't really matter that the stripes uh, line up. And But I did want the stockinette bit to be the same on both socks. Yeah, so not a huge lot, but at least I got the, the pattern started. The next sock I um, started was the pink sock using the Opal Rainforest color from 10 years ago. And I put that on a sock blocker as well. And I finished almost, almost finished the foot of the sock. So I'm going to, I, I've done this bit of the pattern. I will do that bit as well. And then probably knit a few more rounds to make sure it's big enough. And then I'll just knit a normal um, my, my favorite star toe onto the sock. It's not the toe that's in the pattern, but that's okay. The pattern is, um, are the Rome socks by Mina Philip. And even though she gives a heel and toe construction, um, instruction in her patterns, she also, um, says, feel free to put any heel you like on any toe you like. So I tend to just, uh, knit my favorite heel and toe. This is the fish lips kiss heel. And I just uh, kept knitting the rip pattern into the heel. That's not part of the fish lips kiss heel, but I thought it was quite funny. And yeah, yeah. So that's the pink sock. And the fourth pair of socks I'm knitting on are the alpaca spiral socks for my mother-in-law. And I put those on a sock blocker so you can see it actually fits on a foot, even though it's just a tube. And this actually is long enough now to be uh, to get the the toe but the problem was I didn't have the right number of uh, the right size needles at home um, and even here in my shop it took me quite some time to find the right needles for somehow all my um, 3.5 millimeter needles um, double pointed needles or crazy trios seem to have disappeared and you can't really knit the toe on these um, tiny circulars because as I decrease the stitches the needle just is just too long and it's not comfortable knitting so I always change to either double pointed needles or the crazy trios or sometimes um, I'll do a magic loop with the long circular needle but that's not my favorite way of knitting socks so I usually only do that if I'm knitting Magic Loop anyway. Yeah, that's the uh, Pure Alpaca, machine washable alpaca by Hansa Farm. It's called Alpaca and it's so soft and it's a joy to knit and I'm pretty sure it'll be a joy to wear. And this is the yarn that I have left. 
it looks doesn't look like a lot but I'm pretty sure it's enough for the toe and I ended up knitting four rounds more than on the previous pair because as I have less stitches on this sock um, they do get a bit shorter when you put your foot in so to make sure they're not too short I just added four more rounds but I think this looks good now I tried it on myself and they should be fine so I'd, I'd hope to have that finished for today but as I said without the needles there is no way I could knit the toe yeah so that's the um that's all the socks then I knitted some rounds on my glacier tunic or dress by Hochi Locatelli so the beginning is exactly as per pattern and then I started changing things I'm using different color yarns I kept the garter ridge for the front and back even though you're only supposed to put it in the yoke um, I am now at my fourth color that I'm using and I've planned a fifth color <laughs> to put into that dress and then it'll be long enough and big enough and now as you can see I've added um, a few more stripes in that fourth color last time I was somewhere around here where the um, all the purple uh, came together here on the front and as you can see there's less purple now I need to hold it differently otherwise it just gets too difficult um, yeah and there's more gray now in that yarn the third the last color will have even more gray um, yeah I think it looks okay there's still a lot less purple on the back of the dress and on the front but uh, yeah there's a bit of purple here so I still like the way the colors come together and keep changing and um, yeah I tried it on again if I don't forget I'll put the picture on Ravelry so you can have a look did I take a picture I don't think I took a picture when I tried it on I tried it on I made sure it's not getting too long so I can actually knit the same number of rounds with that color that I did with the other two um, with the last color again I will have to check maybe I will even wash it before I cast off just to make sure the front and back won't uh, reach all the way to the floor <laughs> right now they're still far away from the floor but then I, I also know that um, there's quite a bit of stretch in the fabric so yeah maybe before I um, before I cast off I should wash it I will dry it lying flat but then maybe I'll just hang it up for a week or something to see what the weight of the the garment itself um, will do to the length of the dress just to make sure it doesn't get too long yeah that's the that's the tunic or the dress I did not knit on the square shrug that I'm working on I did not knit on the town square shawl so um, just didn't happen this week but I uh, continued working on the gnome by Sarah Shearer Imagine Landscapes her here we gnome again gnome and um, this is what it looks like at the moment I really love it I wanted to finish it but I didn't have anything um, to put into the body to make it a bit heavier to make sure it stands nicely um, and when I first bought the pattern here we gnome again there's a picture of two gnomes a little one and a big one and it's that picture the first time I saw it I, I knew I wanted to have it I wanted to knit the knit it and have those gnomes and at first I thought it was two different patterns because they seem to look different and then when I read the pattern I realized the little one was knit with fingering weight yarn and the big one was knit with I think like worsted weight yarn or something like that so I thought it's it's like the German four ply and eight ply yarn and the first time I knit the pattern I used eight ply yarn and I planned on making a little guy out of the fingering weight yarn I still plan on doing that I just don't know when I'll get get around to doing that but instead of making a smaller one next I mean I did a green one in the same same weight so same size but now I use this yarn which is a lot bigger and look at the difference I think it's so interesting um, 
and I think on the picture, the hat of the bigger one rests on the uh, on the little one. And um, yeah, so I have to find something to put in here that I can finish the bodies, only a few more stitches to knit. And then, as you can see here, I have to knit the beard with the nose and the arms, and then I'll be done. And then I will have to knit a little one out of fingering weight yarn, so I can have three different sizes. That should be so much fun. And as I said, I'd already knit two in that size, and my originally my plan was to make four in that size and four little ones. Not sure I'm going to make four big ones as well. But we'll see. I'll start with the with the one little one and then maybe another little one and then maybe another big one. We'll see. We'll see. But I enjoy knitting those gnomes a lot and I can't wait for the new mystery gnome to start. I again forgot to um, check when the first um, clue comes out. I think it's sometime in September. Maybe it's the 1st of September, then it's only two days away. Um, but I don't know. We'll see. Okay, the next thing I worked on is the crochet pullover. I'm crocheting out of granny squares. So the pattern says to crochet two huge ones and two little ones. And last week I showed you the first, I showed you the finished back and the finished first sleeve. And now I crocheted, um, I started crocheting the front, which is this piece. And I stopped at, that's the back, this is the front. I stopped at 16 rounds because I wanted to compare it to the first sleeve that I crocheted to 16 rounds as well. And one of the things that I can show you right now is how these corners never look straight if you crochet round and round. So they always seem to kind of move to one side, even though... Um, I did finish the round I'm working on and also the squares in the middle never seem to be too straight but all the stitches look the same because these are all the fronts of the stitches and all the backs are on the back and this is the second sleeve that I crocheted and if you look at it I think the yeah the um, the beginning of round is so much more obvious with this one because I, as I said, I changed um, rounds in the corner instead of in the side. That's what I did with the first sleeve. And because I changed direction, I get the two colors on top of each other that I worked when I reached the, the corner. So you always have like two, two rows the same here, then two rows the same there, and then two rows the same here. So that makes it a lot more obvious than with this one. Um, this is my beginning of, of round corner. And I don't think it's obvious at all. It doesn't really look a lot different than the other corners, which is quite funny. But also interesting. But as I said, it's all a bit wonky and the, the corners aren't straight. And if you look at this square, the corners look a lot straighter. So this sort of lines up nicely, it doesn't um, lean to one side. And if you look at the squares in the square, they look a lot straighter as well. So the advantage of turning your work around is that it's a lot straighter before blocking it. But the, the disadvantage is that you can see the beginning of round a lot more clearly which doesn't have to be a disadvantage. It can be something that you go for. And it's, of course, something you wouldn't see if you were using a, a single color yarn. Um, so this is only if you use this colorful yarn that I like to use, that you get this, um, this line. Yeah, and also if you look at it closely, you can see that you get the front of the stitch and the back of the stitch. Um, alternatingly it's not very obvious it's not a that's not a problem I think it's just a little different it's no worse or better or anything yeah so these are the two squares compared to each other um, I think you can you can see how that's a bit wonky and this isn't 
Ja. <laughs> so, now that I've shown you and I've compared them, I can keep crocheting and um, looking, I'm really looking forward to wearing this because I think it's gonna, going to be a lot of fun. So that's the pullover. Then the next thing I want to share with you are the knit-alongs that I have either done or I'm planning on still doing. But there's one thing I wanted to show you before I talk about that. And that's something that's called kumihimo. I'm not sure whether you've ever heard of that before. It's It comes from Japan and it was, I can't really say it was popular in Germany at one point time but there um, some years ago several books were published about how to do that and the books contained these um, these things and I bought them back then and I tried it out a bit and I used it for some kids groups where I was teaching stuff and it was quite nice but I never used it a lot and last time I was in Japan I found another one of these and it was really cheap and I thought well I'll just buy it and maybe some of the kids in my shop want to work with it and um, yeah and last week I showed it to one of the girls and I started this this whatever <laughs> and she wasn't interested in doing it but um, I still thought it might be interesting for you to see and uh, and at some point I will finish it I had to cut off the yarn because if you have eight balls of yarn hanging around and then you move the yarn you get a big uh, disaster. So what I do is I move them along and then I pull at them to make sure they don't tang get tangled. And that's how you work these cords or whatever, is by just taking one of these yarns and putting it into one of the other, one of, into a different place, so to say. And by using different colors you can get different patterns. And I'm using eight um, strings and I think you can use less or more depending on what kind of um, cord you want to make but I really think they look lovely so let's see if the yeah I think I think it's you should be able to see it um, it's quite tight and quite um, strong I should think so you, I could use it as a strap for a bag or um, I don't really know you could make a bracelet I think that's that was one of the ideas on the package um, yeah I don't know what I want to make with it I just wanted to share that I tried this and it's quite fun and it's very very easy so even kids little kids can do that um, if they have the patience but then kids don't mind repeating the same things over and over again. They're used to doing that. Yeah, so that's that. Then on to knit-alongs. And I want to say goodbye to the dishcloth knit-along. Um, and I brought all the dishcloths that I made during that time. They're not a lot. I wanted to make a lot more. And I still want to have more dishcloths. So I won't stop knitting or crocheting dishcloths. I just wanted to finish the um, knit-along because I think it went on for quite some time and um, there were lots of patterns that people have um, talked about or have shared and yeah I just feel like moving on to the next thing. So this is the last one that I made um, that was the uh, something like classic dishcloth or something like that. that. That was the Tunisian crochet sampler that I made up um, this is another crochet pattern. Um, I put the pattern names on, on my Ravelry page, so if you want to um, find out, you can check there. This is sort of like Grandma's favourite dishcloth, but with a lace pattern in the middle. And this is the two-sided dishcloth, I think, something like that. So you knit two triangles and then you sew them together so that one triangle shows the right side and one shows the wrong side and I think that's quite funny. Um, yeah, so that's the dishcloth I have now. I will keep some here in my kitchen in the shop and I'll take some home 
um, in my kitchen there and I'll start using them and uh, see how that works out. Then the other knit along that's still running is the optic blanket and last week I had finished one of the nine square squares. So I started a new square last week and I knit this nice square. I haven't woven in the ends yet. This is a DK weight. The, um, the colorful one is a DK weight sock yarn by Lana Grossa that I crocheted a shawl um, with some years ago and that was a leftover yarn from that plus the black opal DK weight sock yarn and this is the first square of the next part of my blanket. Yep. And the new knit along that I kind of announced last week that we want to start uh, on September 1st, on next, so that's the day after tomorrow, is the Gecolino. And it's a free pattern for a small shawl, shawlette or little shawl. Um, I'm pretty sure the um, pattern is available in German and in English. And I am using Voldacke, which is a German hand dyer. And I'm using this Aniva Niva blue colorway. And the Aniva Niva colorways by Voldakel are their rainbow um, colorways. I don't have um, a skein of that that's not wound into a ball. So I'm showing you this color. So the rainbow bit in that skein is the same colors that you can see in this ball of yarn. And where this ball has dark blue, this one has this light blue or turquoise color. So this is what the yarn looks like before you wind it. And um, Voldacke, I, I wrote to them and they said that they always uh, dye that those colors. They have different um, main colors with their rainbows. And it's um, they're some of their favorite colors that people just buy all the time. So they always um, dye them and Again, I'm not sure whether they ship outside of Germany, but you could check. I link the, the, the shop underneath the video, but everyone who's in Germany or close to Germany shouldn't be a problem. Yeah, so that's the yarn that I'm going to use for my Gecolino. Um, the pattern is written for 100 grams of sock weight yarn, and then it's just a small cholette. You can just keep knitting if you have more yarn. A friend of mine who um, inspired the knit along who knit um, the pattern used two of the she actually used two skeins of that in in this color and uh, it's a beautiful shawl it's a lot bigger of course because she used twice um, the amount of yarn um, yeah so anyone who feels like knitting a little shawlette um, and join us in the fun then please come along you can there's a Ravelry group for this channel and um, there'll be a discussion uh, thread for the knit along for the Gecolino. Yeah, that's everything. I knit and crocheted last week and everything I wanted to share with you. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll say bye till the next time. I'll see you in the next one. That's what I usually say. See you in the next one. Bye. <laughs>